Welcome to Microsoft Flight Simulator with Nikki Backerl D'Angelo. In today's episode, we fly around the Anchorage area, and we have something special. We are actually flying on my backup computer, which is a 3600X and a 5700XT. Checking out this sim, Seven Ways to Sunday, Microsoft Flight Simulator has very quickly become something that I've been cynical of. I was a little nitpicky, started to like it, and over time I've started to fall in love with it. So I needed to take a look at where I was with this by going to my backup PC. Now my backup PC exists because I've had issues with my computer in the past. And it meant that I could either not do videos for my channel, which I have every excuse under the sun recently on why I don't do videos, but it would mean that I don't do videos for my channel or I'm not able to be entertained by the wonderful games that I love to play, like Star Citizen, Elite Dangerous, No Man's Sky, X-Plane, and now Flight Simulator. When I built it, I wanted to build a mini system, and I didn't. I wound up buy, buying the parts to make a micro ATX system. And it's an all-white case and beautiful black smoked glass. It's the white version of the Crystal 280X case from Corsair. When I put together the system, I chose parts that were a few hundred to a hundred dollars to a couple hundred more than a couple hundred dollars cheaper than what my main system was. The processor was about $150 cheaper. I did a 3600X instead of a 3700X. The graphic card was $400 cheaper. I did a Power Color Red Devil. 5700 XT with 8 gigs of RAM instead of a EVGA 2080 with the higher end specs. You know, it, it's got 8 gigs also, but it, it was a $400 more expensive. The motherboards were about $60 different. The RAM was about $50 different. P PC32 instead of PC3600. The coolers were the same. That was about it. Uh, the higher end system has an 850, so it has a RM850X instead of the 750X. So everything about the larger system is a lot more expensive. Even the hard drive. The hard drive in my smaller system is a QLC drive. And QLC SSDs run a little bit slower. A lot slower if you fill them up. Or actually, it's not if you fill them up. It's if you do large transfers with them. They're great for game drives. They're just not great for your OS. Um, the larger system that I have, it has a 960 Pro. Not a 970 Pro, but it's still a fast enough drive. Faster than the Intel 660P that I have. But when it comes down to it, in Star Citizen, I'm running in the high 40s to 50s and sometimes right around 60 frames per second on my beast of a computer that I call Darth Vader. And the Stormtrooper, the white one, is running somewhere around, let's see, if one's running like 57 frames per second, the other one's running 50 to 52 frames per second. I don't have a big difference in the speeds of the different systems. And I think that's because the 3600X and the 3700X are very close and I might be CPU limited. But when I look at it, in a game like this, I'm not. I'm GPU limited. And I know this because I'm running one at 3440 by 1440 and the other one at 2560 by 1440. So that would be this one's 2560 by 1440. And the Darth Vader system is 3440 by 1440. And both graphic cards are absolutely pegged with every bit of RAM taken up. It's kind of amazing. Kind of amazing that I can get similar performance on a game that really melts my high-end system. And it really comes down to graphic RAM. Now, when I was running this, my junction temperature, wherever that is, was running around 90 degrees 
and the GPU temperature was running around 77 degrees, 74 degrees. When my RTX 2080 is running, it's running at 78 to 80 degrees when this game gets going. So both of them are pegged, but the memory is at 99 to 100% full all the time. And that just says it all. This game is graphic card intensive, and we know that. I mean, how could it not be with PBR textures on the aircraft moving map displays and full screen MFDs. You know, it's just crazy that this stuff in here is running that way. But when all is said and done, it's the scenery and the lighting that are killing systems and some plugins, which I found out today and we'll talk about tomorrow. But I was pleasantly surprised when I was flying around with this lower end system with my old and decrepit and falling apart X56 joystick and throttle, and still enjoying the sim immensely. I know, I know, I know. I went up to Anchorage. I flew around a very low density scenery. There were hundreds of thousands of trees. I know there were. And it had water, and there were aircraft in the sky. It was beautiful. And all I have to say is, I'm impressed with the way that the sim scales between the two systems. I was all ready to drop to medium settings. I didn't need to. I could have. I could have gotten a few extra frames out of it, ran at the same speed as my more expensive computer. But I sucked it up, and I feel like this is good enough. Here I am just practicing a, I think this was practice for a dead stick landing into a grass strip that was off to my right. Essentially, I didn't realize I had turned off the engine. I started to lose altitude. And by the time I figured out how to, to turn the engine back on, I had already landed. And then I turned us around and got back in the air. I am just loving this game. And I'm looking at the possibility of what purchase will make it so I could run Ultra. Now, I'm not going to make one because I've just seen the cost of the new 3090, or at least the rumored cost, $1,400. And I want to revisit something. The average flight simmer doesn't have a very high-end system. They're not spending two, three thousand on a computer. The average one might be buying a computer at a store, at a retail store. And it might have a lower end graphic card. It might have lower end RAM. It might have a lower end motherboard. And they're spending $1,200 on average for a computer. In fact, when you look at graphic card sales, graphic card sales, the last I looked at it, AMD dwarfed with their numbers, the number of sales, right, that NVIDIA did. NVIDIA home owns that high-end market, but most people are buying in that mid-range. That's why you see 5700 XTs and more so the 5600s being sold like crazy. And they're not bad cards. But what I see is it doesn't seem to be the GPU right now that's actually giving us poor performance. Now, our processors might be running at 40 or 30 or 60% utilization. That's mainly because DirectX 11 is using four cores instead of the eight or six cores that I have in the two processors that I have. But still, even if they were able to use more cores, my graphic card RAM is still pegged. Not so much the GPU itself, but the RAM. So I'm kind of concerned about what I see as the potential for the cost of these cards that are coming out. Now, I would say the maximum I would ever see spending is what I can pay off either immediately or over a year with my Amazon card. My maximum would be right around $700. 
on the NVIDIA side, that's not even going to get me a 3080. That's going to get me a 3070. And right now, the 5700 XT is just below, just below the 2070. Not the 2070 Super, but the 2070. So Big Navi, to me, must be upping that game to where the Big Navi cards are going to be closer to the performance of the 3070 and 3080 but should cost a lot less with features like 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now, obviously, I am projecting things that may not come to pass. But in order to enjoy this sim at high end at 60 frames per second, or even to imagine playing it on VR, which it will be here once DirectX 12 is here, I, I, I can't imagine having anything without 16 gigabytes of RAM. And NVIDIA is that company that charges for those extra features in the cards. I don't blame them. They really do have the end-all, be-all cards, but they're not so much better. They're for the person that's trying to squeak out those extra frames, and those people buying the Titans aren't the people I'm talking to. The people buying the 2080 Ti's aren't the people I'm talking to. I'm talking to the people that are going to buy a 2080, a 2070, and then this year upgrade to a 3080 or a 3070. If it's only a few frames per second that you're dropping, how many of those frames are we going to get back once we have double the RAM, once we have 16 gigabytes instead of 8 gigabytes? I know we have to wait and see. We don't even know what rumors are right, what rumors are wrong, where the truth lies in these wonderful cards that will be coming out real soon. And Intel is a newcomer to this. I'm wondering where they're going to fit into all of this. How are they going to enter this gaming market and make an impact? Will it be with something like Flight Simulator? I don't know. I kind of hope it is. I hope. Having three game card companies, three graphic card companies, we start to see a bottoming out of the prices, or I should say a leveling off of the prices. They're, they're in an outright launch profile right now as far as each iteration of the card is. I mean, it's amazing. The cards go up in price, a percentage in price, more each year than the actual percentage that you're gaining in frames per second. And I know that the cards are doing more. I know there's these deep learning super sampling. I know that there's RTX, but still, you're asking somebody to spend enough money or spend the money that they could spend on a whole system for a graphic card. And I know it's important to some people. I know it's important to a lot of my friends that play Star Citizen. It is important to me, but not at the cost of being able to buy two of a lower end card, which doesn't work these days because. SLI and Crossfire aren't supported by many games any longer. And I think that there's a reason for that, because they want you to spend more money. But anyway, I really do have my, I have my sight on the horizon over the next two months to see what new processors, what new graphic cards come out, and what that actually does to Flight Simulator, and if it makes it that much more playable. Love the game, love everything about it, and I think it's wonderful. Well, I thank you for joining me on this little rant today. I hope you got a chance to see what the flight around this area was like. There is a little bit of stuttering going on, and I think it has, it has absolutely nothing to do with the game. I was not seeing it in the game. I think it has to do with me actually recording my videos to an external drive. And I have to fix that. And I have a fix coming for that real soon. So if you like the video, please click that thumbs up button. And if you do have a comment, please comment below in the comment section. Tell, tell me what plane inside of the Flight Sim package you want me to fly, where you want me to go, and I'll do it. And I'll talk to you while I do it. I'm going to try to get to some, get to some streaming this week, see how that goes. But in all in all, what I'm going to be doing playing this game, getting back into Star Citizen, doing a couple of Star Citizen videos, and really getting down and dirty about where my channel is going to go with these two wonderful games 
and maybe try to add in maybe another game every now and then. If you are a subscriber or do subscribe today, please make sure to click that notification icon below so you get notified of all my future videos. There is a Patreon for, the, you know, for this channel. The Patreon is patreon.com forward slash Batgirl, and you could become a patron and help support the channel and enable me to get some of the scenery packs and whatever new aircraft come out for this so I can actually feature them here and give you my God's honest truth of opinion instead of the giddiness that you've been getting from some of the people that were given the games. Well, that's all I got for you today. Y'all be safe out there, and I will talk to you soon.